Hello, Geek Tech Industries fans. It's GTI Zlot here, bringing you another episode of Empyrean of some form or another. Uh, today, actually, is a special day for Geek Tech Industries. We have, over the past couple weeks, been working on a Empyrean Galactic Survival server. And uh, we've come up with a variation of the invader versus defender. We've modified it and tweaked it a little bit, added a couple more sectors and some more play fields in the little sectors. And uh, we ramped up the difficulty on it. Um, but having said that, we also cranked up uh, the resources. So there's going to be a lot of resources, except, except for the five um rare resources and the five rare resources i'm talking about is uh gold uh arrestrium zacosium um sathium and neodium um so those are mostly only going to spawn as meteorites or as um asteroids uh the reason being is uh, you can't auto mine uh, asteroids and meteorites. So uh, you can't just go somewhere, throw an auto miner down on some arrestrum or what whatnot, one of the rare ores and, uh, and do easy mode mining. Um, also, you don't start with auto miners. Now we we're not, we're not disallowing auto miners. Uh, if you loot some, great. The mechanics in, in our game are going to make it a little bit more difficult to use them and find them is all. Um, and pretty much they're only going to be used on, on the basic resources. So not that big of a deal. And there's going to be lots of basic resources. So uh, I, I don't feel that... Um, Nuking auto miners altogether is is necessary. I know a lot of people say that the, that they're um, that they shouldn't be allowed in the game. But um, having said that, we I just fired up the server um, after testing it and whatnot. So it's actually live, no password protected. We've just called it Geek Tech Industries Hard Mode. We may change that in the future, but uh, you, you're definitely going to see the Geek Tech Industries name in there. Um, so I do have admin rights on the server, but I'm going to be playing on the server as a player also. So what that means is when I am playing, I am not in God mode and cannot do God-like things. Uh, if I need to administrate something um, other than my own needs then i may have to go into god mode to look at a play field that's crashing or what i don't know but it's not going to be for me to get gear or anything like that so if i die i die if i lose my gear i lose my gear i'm in the, i might have to fresh start like somebody else like anybody else that that screws up and and has to fresh start so um i'm not going to be running around um getting everything I want just by on by snapping my fingers even though I that I have that power I'm not going to be using it uh, it's just for me it takes a lot away from the game uh, okay so let's just go ahead and connect and oh it's still demanding a password I think it I think there is no password let's see huh correct okay um so right now we have four starting planets uh, i know in the invader defender scenario there's actually six uh the trader start and the mercenary start um we we took those out um the mercenary start on hard mode is insane. Uh, that is an insane planet to be a uh, to start on. Um, it would be almost impossible. I mean, Kelt is going to be bad enough. There's no seaweed on Kelt yet. When I play tested it, 
uh, I pressed it, play tested it as a player, and I didn't go in with God mode at all. And I was able to to get an SV fly to the other one M32 because it's in the same sector, so you don't have to actually warp anywhere. Uh, I was able to fly there and get seaweed, so it's doable. It's just super hard. You got to plan out. You got you can't waste your resources. It has to be specifically built to to get an SV to fly off that planet. Um, so I don't want to do that though. Uh, Mato, I like the Mato experience. It's very similar to Omicron. Um, and that is kind of my favorite sort of planet uh, to start on. Uh, the water is has seaweed in it. Um, no oxygen though. Uh, our other solution is M32, which is another planet very similar to Omicron and um, and Mato, but the invader side. Uh, I don't know. And then there's a planet that's similar to um, uh, Akua. But you know what? I think I want to do the Mato start as a defender. It's a PVE planet, has no random meteorites, but all the basic resources, including uh, pentaxid deposits. Um, so that's that's cool. So let's hit start. So this is kind of um, not necessarily early access to the server. This is it's now live, so anyone can can join in at any time. Uh, it's probably that since I just fired it up that I'm probably the very first one in. Oh, there we go. There's some water right there. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna need Prometheum though. I don't know where the Prometheum is. Uh, damn it. Where, oh where, Prometheum can you be? Oh, well, I'm just going to crash. Now, the reason I want Prometheum so bad... Okay, so you, you get the, um, the starting uh, Defender one for Mato for the uh, 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 quest or missions. Uh, so let's... Might as well do them. Um, there's no reason why not to. Uh, so this is the starting loadout that we're giving everyone to start. Uh, O2 generator, gun, 250 bullets, four small med, three antidote pills, five emergency rations, two purify water, a bit of fuel, a drill, chainsaw, three biofuel, survival constructor, core, some sprouts, some pills, uh, an Evo boost, a motorbike construction kit, 75 Promethean pellets and 100 of the four basic ores, uh, 100 magnesium powder, and only one small O2 bottle. So um, I don't have a lot of fuel. So my dilemma is, do I, do I go for the resources really quickly and spawn in an HV and use what fuel packs I have to go around and get fuel? Or do I run around, potentially lose my gear, looking for Prometheum? And the reason why I'm not so worried about the other resources is because I plan on jumping in a lake and harvesting the lake. Um, crap. There's just... There's just nothing around here. You know what? I think I got to do the lake thing right away. I'm going to need oxygen going. Um, yeah, so I'm not even going to bother with resources right now. I'm just going to run to the lake before shit starts spawning. And that's the other thing about getting in a little early. I know it's a, um, I know it gives me a little bit of an edge, um, but at least. I'll know if there's a, a, a 
you know, a mission critical failure with the server before too many people fire up and, and get attached to their, uh, their stuff. Um, but everything's working pretty good so far. So I might as well pick stuff along the way, right? Get some XP. Now, because it's a, uh, a hard start, we decided to make a few things um, easy, like like finding the basic resources should be fairly easy. We, we selected like high amount of de deposits and, and, and uh, large deposits, high large deposits. So we should be seeing some pretty decent deposits um, out of the basic mineral types. So there we go, a nice big lake. I'm pretty sure this is the largest lake on the planet. Uh, I know for a fact it has a lot of seaweed and rocks in it because I've been in this lake before on this seed. So I just can't remember where the Prometheum is and that could be my downfall. We'll see. So I'm just going to go for a swim. Um, now, the reason I like jumping in a lake right away is actually, you know what I should do? I should find a spot to throw my stuff down. So let's, um, let's see, there's some rocks and stuff. Look at all the rocks and seaweed. Love it. So let's pick some seaweed right away. Seaweed is uh, one of the very um, few resources in the game that that is uh, super, um, what would you call, versatile in the way of it being a primary source of fuel for a couple of the different tools, uh, including the basic drill and chainsaw. Um, but it can also be cooked into snacks and eaten. Um, so it's food and fuel, fuel for tools and for, well, tools. Um, but uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't really dally. I really need to get my stuff down and get myself situated. But this, all the seaweed is just too uber. I need to pick. Okay, let's take a look where I am. So, I really want a sharp uh, hill to basically put my stuff up against. So I think we're facing the right direction right now. Let's um, let's just collect what we can along the way here without deviating too much. I'm gonna come back for this stuff, but if I tally too long, my oxygen level is gonna get too low and I'll suffocate. So it looks like we're getting to the the embankment here going up. So this is the edge of the seaweed rock bed down here. Okay. Well, this is probably as good a place as any. Uh, this bit of a clear flat spot here. So I'm gonna place my O2 generator down, um, get that going. So let's get a little closer here. Uh, I'm actually only gonna put one of my cells in right now, because I might be moving this, I'm not sure, and I don't wanna waste the power. I'll let it run for the 45 minutes, uh, collecting auction, because I need it running right away. I, I need it running right now, because because I only start with this one little bottle. So uh, Now I do get a, a bunch of pellets to make more, but not much, because it, it, it actually costs quite a bit to, I think it's like 10 pellets. So I can only make about seven more packs, I think. We'll see. Um, I'm also gonna throw down my survival constructor. Let's just put that beside it here. And I'm gonna put the rest of my crap in there, except for my drill I'm gonna keep out. Uh, I'll throw those fuel packs in there. I don't need the water. I'll put the antidote pills down here on eight. The med kit on nine. 
I'll just keep my emergency rations on me. Keep the drill, keep the bullets. My pistol I'm going to put down in my toolbar. Actually, my drill I will too. Because um, I'll be equipping that quite a bit. Put the biofuel up here. And I think everything else can just go in the conductor. Yeah. Great thing about seaweed is it does not have a um, a perish time like look see the elevate vera that I picked has perish time so in eighty in thirty eight minutes it's gonna it's gonna spoil which is okay I'm gonna need spoiled food too but I picked some plant fibers awesome uh, cobra leaves they will also perish okay so I don't have a fridge to prevent them from perishing so they're probably just gonna perish uh, you know what I'm okay with that the seaweed. On the other hand, I can actually turn that into food right now with my survival constructor. So I've got my seaweed in there. I'm going to queue up two of those. Uh, i got to turn it on. derp a derp And I'm going to eat one of them right away because I'm at 368 food. Each one of these is 75. I don't need another one yet. I'll just put that on me. It has a perish time of 29. That's funny. The uh, seaweed itself doesn't perish, but as soon as you cook it, it has a perish time. Uh, 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 okay. Now there's other benefits to it too, uh, besides the 75 food. It can also um, cure you from food poisoning. So by picking vegetable, fruit and vegetables, uh, and eating them raw, you can actually get food poisoning from them. Um, and that'll cure it by eating a seaweed snack. Okay. Uh, it also has stamina 20. So it, it, if your stamina was below 500, uh, it would give you some stamina. Okay. Sure. Uh, pretty versatile. Pretty versatile. So what else do we need? We need oxygen. It's cooking right now in the oxygen generator. Oh, you know what I should do before anyone else logs in? Um, oh, I, I am completing quests without even realize it because <laughs> I'm a derp. Uh, add crafting, add fuel pack templates. Oh, it wants me to make some fuel packs. Fine. Each one takes 10, so I can only make seven, but each each template makes two, so it costs 10 to make two. Okay, so I can do it. So, so I should be able to get 14 fuel packs. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna need them all. I'm gonna need them all. Uh, we've got Three biofuel that should keep us going for a while until our oxygen runs out. Uh, and it said add motorbike template. Okay, so let's just actually make the motorbike. Okay, whatever. Sure. Now what? Place O2 generator. See, now it wants me to place an O2 generator in the O2. <laughs> and power it on. Dig. You know what? I should have paid attention to the uh, quest before I just inadvertently jumped in a lake and started doing stuff. But whatever. I will be moving it. And um, so, yeah, I mean, at the time that I move it, I'll continue on with the quest chain. In my immediate future, though, I need to gather a bunch of resources. Um, so let's keep... Oh, I just unlocked level three. Uh, we can't ride the motorbike underwater, so I've got one seaweed snack with me. Let's make a couple of more of those. I'll eat one right now because I wasn't, I wasn't going to be completely full if I ate one, so I'll do that. I'm going to put that in the constructor. 
Okay, let's see how much oxygen this has generated. And three bottles. Uh -oh. I guess I'll just take them all right now. Because, yeah, it's not going to fill me up. Okay, good enough. Now we've, we've got O2 to go adventuring with. And, oh, that is some weird graphics there. So to fix that, we'll just unequip and re-equip. Uh, I'll probably just stick with the drill for now because there's a rock right here. So the drills, uh, they added, actually added a feature into the game just on the last patch or the patch before maybe one or two patches ago. Um, auto reload. Woo! Uh, so everything that requires a reload button for uh, now will auto reload. Took them long enough. But I shouldn't diss them too much. They have been fantastic developers. Uh, really good. Really good job so far, guys. Elon Studios is rocking it right now with this game. I think uh, it has huge potential. Uh, it's a great framework moving forward to uh, create a dynamically um, control player controlled universe of their own um so it's it's fantastic it's it's just such a cool game let's smash some of these rocks so i'm going to right click while i have my tool clip and select the stone removal and i'll start oh it's going to auto reload fantastic now i gotta hit f on my crosshairs to pick up those bits. Uh, got cobalt, iron, and magnesium off that rock. Fantastic. Um, pound for pound, I think rocks are the best resource in the game. <laughs> it's it's uh, funny, but true. Uh, really good for starting off because it's you, you get a a fairly decent mixture of all the ore types at at such a close range you're not running across the planet for a specific ore type you're just you're just going along smashing rocks and getting pretty much everything out of them that you need to start uh, another great thing about starting underwater is you can see there's pentaxin crystals underwater that you can pick which is uh, the fuel source for warping so uh, the starting I love starting in the water uh, for this fact alone that here I am I'm, I'm actually getting resources with barely moving anywhere um, and I'm Critters aren't going to come down here and kill me, so there's I'm protected that way. I'm a, I'm protected from the temperature problems because the water is always a steady temperature. Uh, what else? What other benefits here? What other benefits? Um, uh, most stuff cannot see you in the water, so they can't even shoot you, shoot at your drones and stuff like that. What else? What else? The the plethora of resources, so the seaweed, rocks, um, and other stuff at the bottom um, is huge for starting in this game. A, a, a huge component. Like, so I'm picking enough seaweed right now to last me probably for the rest of the game once I'm once I'm done my little my little seaweed and rock smashing. I mean, granted, this can be pretty boring to start. You're just running around, smashing rocks and picking seaweed. I, I know, I know it's boring, but um, I also don't like to die and be stressed out trying to run back from my backpack. So this is kind of the lazy, safe man's way of starting in this game. Uh, it doesn't work on all planets, obviously. Um, Kelt uh, and um, Ninges, um, those are, there's no water to swim around in and be safe in, so you can't really swim around and pick seaweed. Um, you know, none of the moons you can obviously pick seaweed on, so they aren't viable starting planets. 
Um, although I think um, Akatoon has seaweed in it. But I don't think it has a lot of resources. I think it's like... Um, um, it's either Ninges or Skillin, one of the frost planets that you can go to, but the, the, the deposits are like little peeny things. Anyway. Uh, that's not going to be like that on the starting planets for this server, because... We made sure that the settings, the global settings, are set to have a lot of resources. And you can see how, how much resources I'm just, like, you can hear me just click, 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 click. The, each one of those is I'm picking something up. Like, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, most people don't realize how awesome it is starting in this game in the bottom of a lake. It's definitely my go-to easy mode start for the game. Um, even on super duper duper hard servers, if they have a planet that has water and seaweed and they give me a oxygen generator to start, then uh, I'll probably succeed without dying too often to, to before I get a, a base up and running. Um, because that can be the real challenge to this game, is just getting your feet under you. Uh, once you get your feet under you, and my, I mean by by having a vehicle of some sort, is usually getting your feet under you. Because at that point, you're, you're free. Um, the environment isn't going to hit you as hard. And um, it's much easier to gather resources. Now, having said that, Spawning a vehicle without actually having a base to um, spawn it from and, and base yourself out of is really tough because vehicle constructors don't actually uh, have the ability to construct most of the ammunition that the vehicles themselves need. So you need like a large constructor, which only a base or a capital vessel can, can accommodate. Uh, you can see there, I just, I rose to fourth level as I was talking. And yeah, I talk a lot. Now, smashing rocks is not a guaranteed thing. You, you might actually waste resources. Now, I'll run into some rocks where, where it yields no resources. It's just... Uh, I think pound for pound in the game, Smashing Rocks gives you more resources than than digging a deposit. Now, having said that, uh, the reason why you'd go after a deposit is a focus type of resource, obviously. And deposits you can mine with, um, with an HV. So big difference and auto miners. You can't, you can't mine rocks. Um, oh, actually, with an HV, you can. If you put on that, um, that I believe the the lumber harvester actually can harvest rocks. I think. I think. I actually, I, I can't remember now, but I think it can. Um, because I, I think I tested that way back. And now I can't remember when uh, when Experimental Six first came out. I think I tested that, and it and it harvested rocks when they made rocks harvestable. But yeah, you can see I'm just getting crap loads. So my oxygen level is down uh, close to halfway. Uh, so far, I've gathered not a lot of cobalt, but wow, 87 iron, um, 26 magnesium, some silicone and copper, a whole bunch of seaweed, some pentaxid, uh, some alien thorns. So we're getting some good resources. Um, I still got a lot of fuel left in the drill from the first charge. So uh, you can 
can see I'm gonna I'm gonna end up getting a whole bunch of resources off from one charge. So it's, it's really awesome. Oh, there, that one ripped me off. This one's Wow, I love these uh triple awesome rocks. Triple resource rocks, I should say. Another rip off. Oh, like I was saying, there's bound to be a few that's gonna rip me off. So it's a little foggy out. It even says foggy. It's kind of funny that the water gets foggy. I also notice in the game the fog environment permeates through into your base too even if you so you know even though that it's sealed the fog penetrates it yeah whatever whatever I, I would have figured they could do some sort of mechanic like the rain to if you can stop the rain you can stop the fog right right whatever I'm sure they'll that that might be something in the future. I know it. That's just nitpicking. Uh, let's turn my light on so that gives you guys. Uh, hopefully, you are able to see some of that that I've been doing. You know, and watch the video would be completely pitch black. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Uh, I don't want to stray too far from my gear because I'll suffocate. I mean, ideally, I can't really spawn anything in that I have uh, developed in the game until I'm like seventh level I think my my HV is seventh level and my SV is seventh level the lowest level forms that I've made. Uh, obviously there's probably lower level ones too than that. But I'm already fourth level and I'm still picking seaweed. I'm still on my first round of picking seaweed so um yeah basically this is what I'm gonna be doing for Probably a couple more hours, maybe, maybe not. I, I mean, once I get back to my gear, I'll take a look to see how much resources I gather, see what I'm actually going to need to spawn the, um, the spawn in HP. Spawn in an HP would be pretty cool. The only problem is, is if I spawn it, I'm not going to have any freaking bullets for it, and I'm not going to have anywhere to put it. So I might, I might just do. Hmm. Let's give me my strategy. You know what my strategy is going to be. You know what I'm going to do. I'm. Oh, yeah. I've already picked that. Um. I thought it was one of those Prometheum, but I remember on this, on the Invader versus Defender, there is no Prometheum pellets in the water. I guess I could have added them in, but I wanted, I, I didn't want to like completely nuke the scenario to the point where you couldn't recognize it at all as Invader versus Defender. Um, I mean, I've already added a bunch of content, which we'll eventually get to. But I'm not going to go to those playfields unless I can actually get there by 
gathering the resources and building a ship to get there. So. like a meteor shower small meteors we're okay underwater huh well let's head back and check our oxygen level and we'll see how much resources we got and I can smash all these rocks in a bit let me just get back to my gear you can see the how many rocks there are too it's just fantastic um, just gotta find my stuff before I suffocate come on stuff it's right around here. It shows it on the... There it is. I already picked those. Let's go into here. Get some more oxygen. Just use it right away. Get some food going. Twenty two minutes. There we go. We're happening. Okay. So, uh, as we can see, that short little stint, I didn't even use a full charge yet. And we already have 44 cobalt ore. Uh, times that by two for how many ingots you get. So you get two ingots per ore. Um, so that's 88 ingots. That's pretty decent. That's almost what uh, the, the loadout of the uh, survival or of the um, crash or um, drop pod was. Okay, 152 ore, nice. 55 magnesium, nice. Uh, 72 silicone and 96 copper with 178 seaweed and 27 pent and 36 alien thorn so rockin we're already got some more oxygen going um so awesome let's put this shit in here and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna queue up a couple more so we're already over 200 uh, seaweed and it costs it costs three seaweed to make a snack so I could you know, I can make like 66 snacks or something right now so wow I'm, I'm good in food just from seaweed um, but what it also does is make biofuel at the cost of five seaweed biofuel is what's going to power up my drill initially uh, and I'm going to need that to dig out a, t a hole in the side of the mountain to put our base in. So um, I think I'm going to call this episode here. Uh, you can see the uh, just this running around this, this quick little bit is going to produce some decent resources. I wasn't threatened at all at, w at any point. There had been no monster spawns yet. So I'm lucky that way by, by jumping in as soon as the server started up. Uh, I'm sure the next time I log in, there's probably going to be critters around, but I'm, I'm going to be off camera. I'm going to just keep swimming around, collecting more seaweed, collecting more stuff. Um, and then I'll probably drill a hole into the side of the mountain that I'm facing here and get enough rock to to build all the components i need for a quick base so uh, i'm going to do all that off camera and then when i have that ready to go i'll start up the next episode and we'll we'll build a base in the uh, in a hole we'll make a base in a hole so uh, uh that was good so far i didn't die i am level four with zero kills zero deaths my ping is 30 i love that Woo! Um, let's see, I am, oh, jeez, I am like, what, like, what, one, yeah, 
from one seaweed from racing at five. Boo. Okay, so now I'm, I'm level five and zero kills, zero deaths. And I'll I'll show you guys the um, the upgrade points or whatever the hell they're called to get your skills to be able to make stuff. So it's all your schematics for all the gear come from leveling up. And I'll show you that tree uh, on the next episode. Uh, so for now, we're going to leave this off here. Uh, the server is live and running. If anyone wants to join onto the server, it is called Geek Tech Industries Hard Mode. I just updated it to the current um, patch level, and we're good to go. So come on in and, uh, you know, kill me. I'm sure Sticks will be joining us later on. Maybe maybe not till tomorrow or something, but um, I'll be on here uh, later on and, uh, we'll, uh, we, we can chat. Uh, also we will have a open, um, discord channel set up really quick for, uh, people that want to connect up through discord and, uh, while they're playing the game and that would be awesome. We can or get organized. Uh, there's going to be some, some worlds, some play fields that I developed on the server that are going to require pretty much a raiding party to, just to be able to land and take on some of the POIs. It's, it's some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, so that I'm looking forward to doing that in the weeks ahead. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully my goal right now is to get off this planet. So um, um, literally, you know, uh, not, not to get it off, but, but to actually leave the planet. So I, let me rephrase that. Um, I'm going to leave the planet. Uh, that's my goal. Um, <laughs> okay, guys, have a good one. I will talk to you guys later.